How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. So there's a lot of updates. Bob Nightingale of USA Today, whether you like him or not, dropped an absolute boatload of rumors um, regarding the Yankees and their interest in several pitchers. And obviously, we're going to discuss all of it. Jordan Montgomery, Dylan C., Snell. There's a lot of information packed into this kind of notebook drop. And at the end of the day, the Yankees are looking for pitching. We know this. This is true, factual. It's objectively true. And, you know, we know they need it desperately because you don't stop one yard line. You don't, and you're on the one yard line. You don't stop short after getting Juan Soto of making a run at a World Series. You don't send all those freaking assets. You don't send all the resources to get Juan Soto just to stop at the one yard line. You know what I mean? This is, this is the Yankees we're talking about here. They're going to make some moves sooner or later. They're going to reinforce this rotation, just a matter of who. We're going to discuss the latest rumors, but Ryan, before we dive into it, how you do today, my friend? I'm doing great. You know, as you mentioned, the Yankees seem to be very engaged in the trade market and the free agent market. Um, you know, Bob Nightingale also kind of mentioned that he feels as if, you know, just based on what he's heard, based on what he's, uh, you know, what he's been hearing, Jordan Montgomery's probably going back to Texas, which definitely comes as a shock to me because uh, I didn't know if that te- if that TV deal for Texas would uh, allow them to, um, but it seems that issue will be resolved shortly. Um, I think that was something that Heyman also reported that uh, the TV deal is going to get sorted out with the Rangers and they should uh, be able to start spending a little bit more. Um, but, you know, ultimately, ultimately Alex, um, the Yankees need a starting pitcher. Everybody knows that. The Yankees know that. Teams that have starting pitching um, are aware. Um, and, and the Yankees, I think, are kind of coming to the realization, you know, we're going to have to make a move we feel uncomfortable making. To, to go out and make this team better. Kind of similar to the Juan Soto thing where, you know, I, I don't think the Yankees want to go up Thorpe and King, um, but when they realize that that's what it would take to secure a deal, I think they would realize, hey, we have to get this done. Um, we can replace these players. It's fine. Um, and I, I am all for the fact that they made that trade for Juan Soto. So, you know, I, looking at some of the trade pieces, you know, Jesus Lizardo is extremely talented. He's a guy that the Yankees um, are engaged on. Um, there are a couple of concerns on my end. You know, the increase in innings pitched. He has a career high of 178.2. That's not necessarily the most comforting thing to hear as a Yankee fan, knowing that a lot of the issues the Yankees have pertain to injuries. In 2022, he had multiple uh, forearm injuries uh, in his left out arm. So, you know, that's his throwing arm. He's left-handed. That's not the best thing to hear in the world. But when it comes to pure stuff, it's undeniable. A 96.7 mile per hour fastball. Slider had a whiff rate above 50%. Changeup's pretty good. Um, he, he flashed a cutter, even. Um, has a sinker. I wonder if the Yankees maybe lean on the cutter a little bit more. I, I always love seeing, you know, a cutter in a pitcher's repertoire because it's a great strike-throwing pitch and it's a pretty good contact management pitch. But, you know, ultimately, Alex... We're talking about a, a, a pitcher who is of the upper echelon. We're not talking about a top 10 pitcher exactly, but we're talking about a guy who's in that, you know, 20 to 25 range would certainly bolster the Yankees staff. They're also engaged on the Shane Bieber front. And we've talked about this, uh, you know, a ton. We've mentioned multiple times. Shane Bieber just makes a lot of sense for the Yankees. The price tag shouldn't be crazy. Um, the financial investment, it isn't long term. It is a one year investment. Um, and it's not like it's, it, it, it subtracts from your ability to make additions at the deadline. If you want to go out and get a Corbin Burns or you want to go out and get a Dylan Cease or you want to, let's say, Jesus Cesardo is, is back on the block. You still have Spencer Jones. You still have Chase Hampton. You still have Henry Lalane. You still have, you know, Roderick Arias. You still have the, the nucleus of your young uh, prospect core. Uh, and, and look, maybe you have to give up a guy in your top 15 for Bieber, but I don't imagine that that price tag is going to be um, exorbitant. Uh, he's coming off a year where it was a down year, yes, but he still put up, what, a 3.80 ERA across 21 starts. Um, you know, you hope he's a little bit healthier. You hope he looks more like his 2022 self, but he's trading at driveline right now. I think it's about as good of an indicator as it comes for, you know, trying to improve your velocity and get back to where you where he was. Um, and the relationship with Matt Blake is great. So, you know, if you're asking me right now, Alex, on uh, January 7th, 2024, we'll see how this ages. I think the most likely pitcher for the Yankees to walk away with at this point in time has become Shane Bieber, if they are as engaged in the trade conversations as Bob Nightingale has led us to believe. If I had to put my money on it right now, I'd say Shane Bieber is going to be a Yankee, uh, mainly because, it, like you said, it just makes too much logical sense. The price is $12.2 million in estimated arbitration salary. It's a rental. It's not going to cost you Dominguez or Spencer Jones or Chase Hampton. You're looking at Everson Pereira and another piece, probably. Nothing crazy. Um, Shane Bieber's coming off a down year. His velocity's dropped. But again, like he's working hard to get back where he was. And the Cleveland Guardians realistically aren't making a push at a World Series. So you're kind of asking yourself, if you're Cleveland, where can 
can we get maximum value now? Shane Bieber's probably going to walk in free agency. The Yankees, if he comes off a good year, maybe extend him on a reasonable deal. You know, there, there's opportunity here, but I think it just makes a lot of sense. At least just a one year, you know, let him be a middle of the rotation guy and you bet on Rodon to come back. But, you know, Luzardo's interesting because the Miami Marlins, and I'm going to throw out a concept here, and I disagree with this concept, but I'm going to throw it out there because it is a conversation I think people will have. Lazardo was a very solid pitcher, pitched what, 178 innings last year, career high, two back, back-to-back seasons with over 100 innings pitched, has had injury history kind of derail his development at times, but this is a guy with like upper 90s fastball, really solid pitcher, he's a lefty, he's a lefty, right, I'm pretty sure he's a lefty, so you know, you're looking at a guy here that could be a nice piece in this rotation, and a high upside one that, you know, you have control over for a couple years, the question is, what are you willing to give up for him? Um, and I'll say this right now. When you're looking at what the Yankees have to offer, for Luzardo, it's going to cost you one of those top prospects probably. I don't think Dominguez, but maybe they want a Hampton or a Jones. But what if the Yankees, because they need infielders, right? They need a shortstop. They need you know second base, catcher. What if you – is there a world where you see Glaber Torres' name show up in this equation here, Ryan? Because – you know, we know that Cashman said, like, Glaber Torres is our second baseman. Why would we trade him? He was our second best hitter last year, and I agree with that. I don't think we should move Glaber Torres. But you, we also can't ignore the fact that he's been of a part of these trade talks for the better part of two years now, right? They have been floating him for in trades for years. Is this the one that finally pushes it over the hump because they have Peraza, you know, they feel good about him? Or you try to build a package around Peraza. I mean, that's way—I mean, you're going to need a lot more than just Peraza to get Lozardo. Like, keep that in mind. But Gleyber Torres, like, he is a guy that could extend. He is a very, very good player. Um, is that somewhere where you think the Yankees would start a conversation? Like, you know, we don't want to give up one of our top prospects, but we'll give you an MLB-ready um, second baseman who, you know, was one of our best hitters last year, would be one of your best hitters. Is that something you're considering? Because for me, I think it's a non-starter. I don't want to get rid of Glaber, um, but I think people will have that conversation. Yeah, you know, one of the most interesting things is that Glaber on social media has been very vocal about he wants to be a New York Yankee. He would love to be extended. He wants the Yankees to, you know, give him a long-term extension. And the team hasn't approached him about one. Now, I wonder if that was contingent on a guy like Yamamoto, if that's contingent on what the Yankees do uh, in terms of starting pitching. But it doesn't feel like he's in their long-term plans. Like, we can sit here and talk about how he should be in their long-term plans or what we believe the Yankees should value him at. But... If the Yankees continue to not value him at that price point, what am I going to... I can't sit here and make it happen. I can't offer Glaber an extension. Um, you know, if the Yankees don't feel strong strongly about extending him, they don't feel strongly about keeping him long-term, you kind of understand why they would involve him in trade talks. Now, I don't think he's going to get moved this winter. I don't believe that we're going to see Glaber Torres on a different team, mainly for the reasons, as you mentioned, he is one of the team's best hitters. Um, and, you know, people often hear that and say, yeah, because the lineup sucks. And it's like... Well, no, if a 123 WRC plus hitters on your team, he's a good hitter. Like, that's a good hitter. Uh, there are not a lot of 123 WRC plus hitters, much less 123 WRC plus second baseman, right? And Oswald Peraza is definitely not a 123 WRC plus hitter. So, you know, some of the things we saw Gabe improve during the uh, winter that, uh, not the winter, excuse me, during the season last year that, you know, I, I think really entices me is that the contact skills got better. Um, you know, that's something to me that's so important. I think the ability um, to combine contact and power really elevates your profile, especially on a baseball team where, you know, the Yankees have, for the most part, have had us have a track record of not having guys go out and, and put up big time, uh, you know, or, or having guys go out and put up big time strikeout numbers. And, and then how it pertains to Miami, I don't know how much the Marlins value a guy like Glaber Torres because it doesn't seem like they would make the financial investment to keep him. They're historically speaking a very cheap franchise, a very frugal one. Um, we've seen them make moves to shed salary in the past. They're not even really engaged on Jorge Soler conversations, and that's a guy who was on their team last year, who was one of their best hitters, and they're just saying, eh, we'll let him walk. Um, so, you know, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit perplexed as to what, you know, the fit would be there financially. I look at a team like maybe Seattle and say that might be a better fit because they could slot Luis Arias at third base, and Glaber would obviously be an instant impact player there. And Jerry Depoto's very uh, extension friendly. They extended Luis Castillo following uh, their acquisition of him at, uh, at the end of the 2022 season they extended Julio Rodriguez they gave him like 400 million dollars some crazy number I know that like the 400 million dollars is contingent on a couple of incentives but they did give him an extension um they've been pretty frugal with extension not frugal soon they've been pretty um they, they, they've been pretty active in the extension market and I believe that they would make an extension for Glaber Torres if possible that's why I look at a guy like Bryce Miller and say there's a chance right like if you offered a 
package with Glaber. Um, perhaps you throw in a guy like Will Warren, and then you throw in a guy like Ben Rice. Maybe that gets the Mar the Miami, uh, not the Miami Marlins, excuse me, the Seattle Mariners talking. I do think Bryce Miller is one of the most talented young pitchers in baseball. His stuff plus was well over 110. This is the type of guy who's, whose stuff is really good. Um, but am I, am I going to trade Glaber Torres knowing I, I have to start Oswald Peraz every day? I'm not necessarily sure. Maybe the Yankees find a way to pivot on the market. Maybe they go out and, like, let's say they try to go out and get a guy like Jorge Polanco. But now that's four trades you've made in the offseason. And that's a bunch of, you know, trade capital you've gotten rid of. I just don't see the Yankees doing that. Um, it's weird. Glimmer towards the situation of the team is weird. How he fits into these trade conversations, it's weird. Um, because I think the Yankees need him more than they'll get, than, you know, people make it out to be. And I think teams are cheaper than people make it out to be as well. Like the Marlins are not, like the Marlins don't want to foot the bill on $50 million of Glaber Torres, even if he's worth it. Um, they don't want to fit the, the doll. They don't want to fit the bill on like $50 million of Jorge Soler. Um, they, I mean, they're the team that, that dumped all of their really expensive players back in 2017. This is just a cheap franchise, Alex. So I don't really know how the Yankees would be able to use major league talent in that regard. It just doesn't feel like they have the capital to get a deal done with the Marlins without parting ways with players that I don't think they're going to part ways with. And that's why I'm a little bit stuck on like, yes, I would love some of their pitching, but I don't know if they're going to get Jesus Cesardo. A guy that I think is more realistic, Edward Cabrera, right? Um, Kind of like Dylan Cease in the sense of like, great stuff, poor command. Obviously, he doesn't have the highs of Dylan Cease, but actually had better run prevention this past season. I don't know about you, but I did my research on him. I looked at some of the pitch usage. I think the Yankees could get more of his profile, but the concern for me is the injuries. So, Alex, it just kind of feels like there's no perfect option here. The Yankees are going to have, like, we're going to sit here and talk about a, a, a very serious flaw with whatever pitcher they come up and get. And, and that's the reality for a lot of Yankee fans right now. Like, I need everybody to be aware of the fact that no matter who we get, you're going to have a little bit of doubt about that pitcher. It's just the market and where it's gone right now. And honestly, it's the future of pitching with how injuries are. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, I'll give my take on Dylan Cease. Um, obviously, a guy that eats innings, guy with a really good upside. He's had one really great season, right, over, over five years, that 2-2 ERA in 2022. So there is some risk. Like, you are playing the game that you are trying to get that really great season. Um, but I will say this. Right now, I think the Yankees are better off just spending money and – you know, trading a middling prospect like Pereira, who's going to be blocked for Shane Bieber. Like, I think that really is – like, in a perfect scenario, um, I think you like Stevenson, right? Uh, you know, the, the bullpen arm. And if you paired, like, Stevenson with a Bieber acquisition and you went and signed, like, a Monty or Snell, I mean, you, that's your championship, you know, kind of situation right there. Like, that, that's a significant play. I don't think they'll get three of those guys personally, but maybe a one bullpen arm and one starting pitcher. But let's talk about one controversial arm that popped up in that Bob Nightingale report, Ryan. I know you're going to like this one. So <laughs> this one actually, like, I, I looked at this. I had to, like, squeak my eyes a little bit. I was like, I got LASIK, man, but I don't know. I might be blind again. <laughs> this is crazy. So Nightingale reported, reported in this article that Marcus Stroman actually told the Yankees he wants to sign with them. And – I love this, right? Because because the Yankees went back and the Yankees didn't even say anything. Apparently, they have no interest in giving him a deal. They have they declined to offer him a contract. Look, Stroman's a good pitcher. Like if you look at his numbers, his ground ball rate is over fifty percent every single season. He actually profiles pretty well to pitch in Yankee Stadium. But the dude is a cancer to your locker room. He publicly ostracizes himself over and over again. He attacks fans. He's taken public shots at the Yankees and. and specifically saying they can't even win with their payroll. So why the hell are we about to give him some of that payroll? Why the hell are we supposed to – any any organization, why would you go and hire someone who has attacked your strategy, your business model? It is crazy to me. So that being said, Marcus Stroman's got some crazy stuff going on upstairs because the fact that he was – he will publicly take shots at an organization and then tell them, yeah, we, I want to sign with you just for them to say, yeah, we're not giving you jack shit. That is hilarious to me. I think it's it's absolutely – he's got a set of balls to be able to do that, man, to take those shots publicly on social media where it's forever living and then go to tell a team that he wants to sign with them anyway despite saying that their high payroll and everything that they do does not result in wins. He just – what you know what this says to me, Ryan? He was trying to latch on to a team that is on their way to a championship. He, he's trying to latch on to a team that can make a push at a World Series. This is This is just – classic gold digging you know from a player and he knows and he knows the Yankee everyone everyone wants to use the Yankees as leverage Yamamoto did it everyone freaking does it now Stroman's trying to do it too so I, I really don't appreciate that 
please stay a thousand feet away from this guy. He is a cancer to your locker room. It's only a matter of time before he gets booed off the mound. And he starts taking shots at Yankee fans, ends up getting released anyway in the middle of a contract. That is a the, if there's any mistake to make, it is that guy. So I'll let you get your take on Strowman. I am so against it. I couldn't even vocalize it more if I tried. Um, but you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you share the same sentiment. Yeah, uh, there are like I know that some someone's gonna comment. Well, who cares what he said about Cashman? Like, I you gotta sign the best players, and to an extent, sure, I would agree. But um, like, let's be real here. Uh, there are a lot of other off-field issues as well. Um, you know, obviously there was incidents where he was liking uh, tweets where it was calling various Mets reporters different uh, slurs uh, based on their ethnicity, which you don't want that off-field distraction, um, you know, during the whole situation with another controversial uh, athlete uh, that actually also played in New York uh, with Kyrie Irving, uh, with that whole situation, liking more tweets, uh, supporting uh, even more discriminatory, uh, you know, I guess I, I wouldn't even, would you call it comments? I guess comments is the best way to put it. Um, it was, I mean, this is an off-field distraction machine. This is a guy who does nothing more than, you know, create, uh, you know, controversy on social media. And as you mentioned, he's the type of guy who just ostracizes people around him. Um, you know, he was very vocal about, I never wanted to be a Yankee. I wanted to be a Met after the Mets acquired him um, and, and was, again, like combative. He's, he's been combative on social media. He has downplayed various players in the Yankees, um, you know. There are so many things wrong with trying to sign Marcus Stroman. And again, we're both like, I think we both acknowledge, like, if you just looked at the stat sheet, if you just looked at the numbers, the back of his baseball card, you blocked out the name, and he said, All right, would you sign this guy? I'd be like, Yeah, I'd honestly, I'd probably say he's one of my, he'd be like probably second or third on my board at the very lowest. Um, but the off field issues are genuinely a concern, and this is a team that cannot have off field distractions. Look, I, I the Josh Johnson, we, we kind of saw it with him where it was like, I feel like the second the whole incident happened with Tim Tim Anderson in 2022, I feel like that was the start of the end of Josh Donaldson being like a well liked player in New York, right? Like it just spiraled from there. All he like it, it's just I'm not saying I, I don't want players who push the who have a little bit of edge to them. I understand that everybody's the nicest dude in the world. I, I get that. Like you're not trying to harbor the nicest people in the world and, and call it a baseball team. You're trying to hand, harbor the best players on the planet. Um, but end of the day there are ways where, where players can be distractions for you where players can cause issues for you i mean he's basically lambasted the new york market like once he left the mets he, he lambasted them do we want to bring in a guy who's gonna you know publicly call out and, and lambast the new york market and the fans and ownership and whatever if he leaves in for agency and, and doesn't get what he wants from us I, I imagine that within 24 hours he's gonna make a statement on twitter that none of us will see because we're all blocked of course um and he'll he'll go out and he'll complain and say the report isn't true, it's bullshit, or something like, don't believe everything you see on social media, or something of the sort. Like, the guy is just an off-field distraction. The guy just makes headlines for all the wrong reasons. And he's coming off of a shoulder surgery, like or uh, injury, excuse me. They're, like, I, he's old, he's throwing soft than he's ever not thrown before. Just go out and get, like, if you're gonna just go get Shane Bieber or something, I'm... I'm not going to sit here in, in June and talk about, hey, should market, should the Yankees, you know, suspend Marcus Stroman for a game or two for, you know, liking clearly discriminatory uh, comments on Twitter or, you know, should the Yankees are, are like Marcus Stroman makes a comment like, dude, I, if we signed him and we posted like a, a stat line where he doesn't do well, he'd probably block us. So like, I'm just, I'm good on him. I'm good. Like he's completely off my board. Completely off my board too. So you know, that's kind of like the the roundabout uh, concept of this article a lot. So the the, t, the I guess the um, the major things to walk away from this episode would be the talks for Dylan Cease have intensified. A lot of teams are involved, Yankees, Orioles, but they the Yankees don't want to give up top two 100 prospects and then two more players. It's They don't want to do it, which I fully support. Um, the second thing here being Luzardo, you know, they are interested. They've had conversations with the Marlins. Again, I don't think they want to give up top prospects. They're just probably throwing feelers out to see what the market is like, what they want. They have interest in Shane Bieber, and honestly, it makes the most sense to me. So I feel like they should go in that direction. Um, he also said they could get into the Josh Hader market. So Josh Hader's another guy to keep an eye on. Um, obviously, Hader's elite, right? He would be your your superstar closer. You know, this is a guy that, uh, end of the day, I'm pretty excited to watch. Um, at any team, he's that good, and he's coming off a year where his sinker and slider combo oh, were freaking insane, right? Like, Ryan, if you could build a closer in a lab for Matt Blake, it would be Josh Hader, a lefty with an elite sinker and an elite slider that produces a lot of strikeouts and very little home runs. Like, that's that's what you want in a, in a player. He was ridiculous this past season. So, 
If he would run that back for the Yankees, imagine the value you get out of that. So, you know, something to keep an eye on. There's a lot of rumors coming out right now. Of course, some we don't like with the Strowman stuff. Uh, but nonetheless, always happy to hear your thoughts below in the YouTube comment section. Make sure to like and subscribe as always. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.